there's an $11 small cap stock that you've probably never heard of that's an absolute beast stock. And it's a really boring company, and that's why I think you probably haven't heard of it. I see an implied about 20 to 25% upside in the near term and much, much more than that over the medium term and long term. So we're gonna dive into the stock in this video, but first, before we get into all that, thank you for being here. I'm Austin, I'm a co-owner of cloudmusicsuite.com. I'm a stock market investor, and I am a shareholder of this company. I was a buyer at the end of 2022. I chilled out a little bit, I didn't acquire shares for a few months, and then mid-2023, I started buying again. Real quick, the channel's somewhere in the 2,000 subscriber range. If you're not one of those people already, go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you are one of those people, thank you so much. I appreciate you in a major way. As a thank you for being subscribed or clicking that subscribe button, here's a picture of my brand new puppy. Her name is Penny. She's a standard poodle for anyone that cares. If you're looking to be part of our stock market community, get access to the exclusive Q&As. Check out my watch list each month as I update it and chat about all the opportunities I see out there in the market. Go ahead and join our Patreon. It's the pinned comment down there in the comment section. I appreciate you in a major way if you choose to support the content in that way. All right, let's get into this. So is this company a software company? Is it a tech company? Is it software as a service company? Is it some kind of biotech company? No, it's way more boring than that. It's actually a food company. So yes, what I'm saying is that there's a food company out there that's an absolutely amazing opportunity, total beast stock right now. And the stock we're talking about here is Vital Farms. You might not have ever heard of it, but the ticker is VITL in this company. The market cap is around 470 million as of recording this video with a stock price of about $11. When we compare Vital Farms valuation metrics, revenue growth, net income growth, balance sheet and cash flow statement, even the big dog food companies like Kraft Heinz can't keep up. So I think this stock is extremely undervalued. I'm going to show you why I think it's undervalued by comparing it to the big dog like Kraft Heinz. So unlike a lot of tech stocks, this is a very easy business model to understand. And that's why I think it could be an attractive opportunity for a lot of people because it's really, really important to understand the business model to know what you own. Vital Farms sells two main products. They sell eggs and they sell butter with the high majority of their revenue coming from eggs. They've got over 300 farms that partner with them inside of what they call the pasture belt, where just like most food companies, they partner with these farms. And then Vital Farms has these partnerships with retailers like Harris Teeter, Kroger, Publix, Whole Foods, Earth Fair, etc., where they can sell their butter and egg products. That's it. That's a very simple business model to wrap your head around. Doesn't take a lot of research work to figure out what's going on there. So I love the stock for that reason alone. But as we dive into the numbers, you'll see where the real magic is. So let's start with the most recent quarter. Most recent quarter, a few really important highlights. They had almost 30% revenue growth for a freaking food company. That's insane. We're really not gonna see that with any other food company out there that's actually profitable. So they increased their revenue 28.4% all the way up to 106.4 million as they look on a year over year basis. They had a gross profit margin in Q2 of 2023 of 35.5% as compared to 30% in the year ago quarter. The 5% gross margin expansion in the course of one year is very, very respectable. And then when we look at income from operations and net income growth, it's absolutely insane. Income from operations was all the way up to $8 million from a very low $700,000 in the year ago quarter. That's crazy. That's more than a 10X in income from operations in one year. And remember, income from operations is really, really the holy grail of what we gotta have going on in those income numbers. If we have a bunch of interest income and that's making the net income number look good, like a lot of companies have right now because Fed funds rate is high, that's not sustainable. It's not a sustainable way to fund your growth. Funding growth from operations is the way to go. Income from operations is really what I like to look at when we look at those income numbers, although net income obviously is very important as well. So moving down to net income, speaking of crazy income growth, net income was up to $6.7 million this past quarter, and that's up from $200,000 in the year ago quarter. That's so ridiculous. What a massive expansion that they're seeing right now. If they can keep even just a fraction of that net income and income from operations growth, this company is poised to be the best run food company out there in the entire stock market. And I'm not exaggerating. That net income of $6.7 million led to 15 cents per share of EPS, and that's compared to a flat zero cents of EPS in the year ago quarter. And if you like those income numbers and those income from operations numbers and those net income numbers, you're gonna absolutely love the balance sheet. Let's dive into it real quick. Looking at the most recent quarter, total assets of 236 million, current assets of 171 million. And what I wanna focus on there is cash and cash equivalents and short-term investments. So cash and cash equivalents, 40 
47 million, short-term investments, $45 million. Let's compare that to the liabilities line. So current liabilities, they have no debt on the books. All they have on the books for current liabilities is a short-term lease liability of $2.3 million. There's literally no debt on the books past that that's due within a one year span. And then it gets even better. Let's go down to non-current liabilities. These are liabilities that are due anytime that's not the next 365 days. So they have no long-term debt whatsoever at all. All they have is $6 million in long-term lease liabilities. Holy cow. To have $93 million in cash and short-term investments and no debt is absolutely insane, guys. For a small cap company, this is top 1% of all balance sheets I've ever looked at. And since their balance sheet is in such a great spot, their enterprise value is $90 million less than their market cap. Looking at all valuation metrics, a trailing PE of 30, a forward PE of about 17, a price to sales of 1.2. I love to see these two things. One, price to sales lower than Kraft Heinz, which is a major food giant, which we'll look at in just a second. And by the way, the enterprise value to revenue is below a one because we talked about that $90 million less in enterprise value than market cap because their balance sheet's in such a great spot. But I also love to see the trailing PE is almost double that of the forward PE. What that lets us know is they're expected to grow their net income in a major way over the coming quarters. Net income growth is what often move stock prices in the long term. In the short term, it can be emotions, macroeconomic environment, etc. But in the long term, if we have net income growing faster than revenue, this company is going to get the respect from the market and money is going to start to flood into this company. Let's do a really quick comparison to Kraft Heinz. I'm sure everyone knows what Kraft Heinz is, big major food conglomerate. First thing we see that's way worse is that the enterprise value is $20 billion more than the market cap. Kraft Heinz is a debt ridden company that is not going to do well in the higher interest rate environment times that we're in right now as we start to see those Fed lags catch up. Right now, Kraft Heinz trailing 12 month PE is a 13 with the forward PE being 11. That trailing PE looks way better than Vital Farms, obviously, but that forward PE is only a little bit better than 11 versus a 17. And then we look at the price to sales. Kraft Heinz is trading at a higher price to sales at about a 1.5 in comparison to Vital Farms 1.2. And then even worse, the enterprise value to revenue, 2.2 for Kraft Heinz, and it's below a one for Vital Farms. So even if Vital Farms just catches up in the price to sales and the enterprise to sales valuation metrics, we could see a 2X in Vital Farms if they get the respect that Kraft Heinz gets. And that assumes that there's no growth for Vital Farms. That's just their current position right now in comparison to food giants like Kraft Heinz. But it gets even more ridiculous when we compare the revenue growth rates of Kraft Heinz to Vital Farms. Right now, Kraft Heinz is expected to grow 3.7% in their current quarter, negative 3% in their next quarter, 2% in the current year, and 1.5% next year. Let's compare that to Vital Farms real quick on the revenue side. Vital Farms is expected to go 24% in the current quarter, 19.3% next quarter, almost 30% for the full year 2023, and then down to 16% for full year 2024. Those revenue growth rates are absolutely crushing Kraft Heinz. And to have a price to sales and an enterprise value to sales considerably lower than Kraft Heinz, that is laughable. This stock is undervalued like crazy. And with the net income growth that they're having and the insane net income beats, the EPS beats that they're having, I think that forward PE is actually too high at a 17. I think it's more like a 12 or 11 based on their insane beats that they put up on the EPS side. Q3 2022, 100% upside surprise. Q4 of 2022, they were in line. Q1 of 2023, 220% EPS upside surprise. Q2 of 2023, 114% upside surprise on EPS. This company has a history of absolutely crushing those EPS estimates, and I think that forward PE is actually way too high at a 17. Net income growth from full year 2023 to full year 2024 is expected to be 30%. And remember, they might absolutely crush those numbers, but that's while the expected revenue growth is 16%. So the, the net income growth almost double of what the revenue growth is, absolutely amazing to see. 
This company's in an insane spot. They're undervalued. They're growing like crazy. And they've done all of this, by the way, in these high rate environment times with a pretty dang weak economy, with all this insane food inflation. They're not selling the cheapest eggs out there. They're selling like some of the most expensive eggs out there. They're selling some of the most expensive butter out there when you go to Publix, when you go to Whole Foods. This company clearly has pricing power behind them. They clearly have the brand behind them that can allow them to charge the prices that they charge for these eggs. And people will continue to buy them. In their most recent quarter, they said only 6% of their revenue growth was due to higher volume and the rest of it was from price increases. People are not cutting back on having healthy eggs that they feel good about eating because they know that Vital Farms has a certain system where they're going to treat the hens well, they're going to raise these chickens humanely, etc. And people feel very, very good about that. So Vital Farms brand is extremely strong. Their expansion is extremely strong. The revenue growth is insane. The net income growth is even more insane and the current valuation metrics indicate that this stock is absolutely undervalued. You don't have to always buy the most beastly, crazy tech stock out there. You can buy something boring like a freaking egg company. They sell eggs and butter. Really easy to wrap your head around. There's opportunities in the market. Like Peter Lynch says, look at 100 different stocks to buy one. This could be one of those 100 different stocks you look at. Maybe you'll buy the stock. Maybe you won't buy the stock. But you got to recognize and you got to realize that some of the best opportunities out there in the market are not really hard to understand business models. They're not software companies. They're not AI chip makers, etc. Those stocks are cool. Those stocks can be really high growth, but they're really hard to wrap your head around. Go ahead and check out something like Vital Farms, a food company. If you're adding this stock to your portfolio, I want to hear about it. I want to know about it. Let me know in the comments below. Also, I want to hear if you've never heard of this company. I would bet most people watching this video have never heard of this company before. So let me know that in the comments as well. If you want to be part of the stock market community with the Patreon, go ahead and check out the pinned comment down there. It's also in the description. If you want access to exclusive Q and A's on there, my watch list that I update each and every month, any moves I'm making out there in the market, general stock market commentary, portfolio structure, way more than that. Go ahead over there and consider supporting the channel on Patreon. I appreciate you in a major way. Thank you so much for being here and have an amazing day.